There's a first time for everything. First love, first kiss, and first, you know. But after World War II, the globe's two superpowers entered a race to conquer space, and everything was a first there. Let's take a look. If you looked at the night sky between October 1957 and January 1958, you'd be able to see Sputnik 1, the first ever artificial Earth satellite. Sputnik was a metal sphere with four radio antennas. It was visible all around the Earth and people could listen to its signals on the radio. But to the surprise of many, it was built and launched by the Soviet Union, publicly perceived by Western countries as an inferior technological power. This triggered what is now known as the Sputnik Crisis, a period of public anxiety in the US due to the scientific gap between the two superpowers. In reaction to it, NASA was created, and the space race began. Although the Soviets are quite likely ahead in some missile and special areas, and are obviously ahead of us in satellite development, as of today the overall military strength of the free world is distinctly greater than that of the communist country. How many more surprises have Russian scientists up their sleeves for the public? Two things are astonishing about Sputnik II. Its weight, more than half a ton, and its live passenger, a dog. In November 57, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 2, and in it, the first ever animal in space, at least to our knowledge. Like her, a stray dog selected from the streets of Moscow was never expected to survive the mission, as technology to deorbit still didn't exist. However, the dog survived both the launch and the conditions in outer space, and then died within hours from overheating. This experiment proved that a living passenger could survive a launch into orbit and weightlessness, marking a cornerstone towards human spaceflight. The space race continued at a faster speed and both superpowers of the Cold War developed projects to put the first human in space. The US was developing Project Mercury. Some of these days we're going to have power plants that will enable man to go out in space and make decisions on where he wants to go and what he wants to do, much as we do in airplanes now. But again, it was the Soviet Union that succeeded first. On 12th of April 1961, the Vostok 1 was launched with cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, the first ever human to journey in outer space and to orbit the Earth. After returning home safely, Gagarin travelled abroad to promote the Soviet Union's accomplishment. The Russian Tu-104 touched down on London Airport. Among its passengers, one of the world's most famous men, Yuri Gagarin. His initials on the number plate made for the occasion. The man who won a place in history by going in orbit round the Earth came to London to visit the Soviet exhibition. Two years and five Vostok missions later, on the 16th of June 1963, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman to fly in space. But not only that, she was also the first civilian to fly in space, as she'd been selected from over 400 candidates. Distinguished passenger arriving at London Airport was the woman who last June made 49 orbits of the Earth, Valentina Tereshkova. Valentina made sure of her place in history when she demonstrated that woman is on equal terms with man in the conquest of space. For 12 minutes, cosmonaut Alexei Leonov was spacewalking as he became the first person to ever leave a spacecraft in a specialized spacesuit. It was March 1965 when the Soviet Union launched the Voskhod 2, yet another step for the Russians in the race that was now effectively being run out there in space. In America, astronauts were still only training for this important activity. And it was not until three months later that Ed White climbed out of his Gemini 4 capsule as it travelled round the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. Yeah, get back in. Roger, you're on your way getting, you're getting him back in. When JFK said this before the US Congress in 1961, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. After several setbacks, Eight years later, the American astronauts of Apollo 11 became the first ever humans to set foot on the moon. These images and Neil Armstrong's landing transmission speech were broadcast and seen by at least 600 million people. I'm going to step off 
the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Cold dark here in the shadow. I'm a little hard for me to see that I have good footing. I'll work my way over into the sunlight here without looking directly into the sun. Apollo 13 was the third intended mission to land on the moon. Astronauts Lovell, Swaggart and Hayes were launched on the 11th of April 1970. Two days later, they had to abort lunar landing after an oxygen tank exploded, damaging the service module. The American crew dealt with limited power, loss of cabin heat and shortage of potable water. They had to makeshift repair the carbon dioxide removal system in a highly critical operation. Luckily, with the assistance of NASA's mission control, the rescue was successful and they returned safely to Earth on the 17th of April. Thankfully, in history, only three people could be considered to have perished in space. It happened in 1971 when Soviet space mission Soyuz 11 was about to return to Earth after boarding a space station. On board, cosmonauts Dobrovolsky, Volkov and Padsayev, who died when the capsule depressurized during preparations for re-entry. The three crew members are the first and only humans to have died outside the Earth atmosphere in what could be considered the only extraterrestrial casualties to date. <laughs> 